Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Ancient Assyrian Props and Costumes. I'm Donald Barker and today we'll be talking about my ancient Assyrian chariot build. So I had finished making my scale model and had done my research and my drawings and was waiting for the opportunity to be able to see if I can make those ideas work, those drawings that I had done come to life. In this phase of the chariot build is actually the development to prove whether or not I had the skills and the right methods to be able to put together an ancient Assyrian chariot in my garage without a lathe and without even uh, proper basic tools and equipment working from my garage at home. So there were quite a lot of restrictions on the work that I wanted to do and what was actually possible to do. Uh, so I thought about it long and hard and saved up some money to be able to buy some cheap uh, power tools to be able to start the project and bring it, uh, bring it to fruition with as little cost as possible. And that was within my skill range to be able to complete as well. I began my full-size reconstruction of an Assyrian chariot uh, in the end of December and had started putting the chassis and the cabin area together when I realized that, hang on a minute, it just might be worth my while to record and take as many photos of the process as I was going along. Uh, not only for a record of myself, but if I could actually pull it off, then we would have come up with a way that was relatively uh, cheap and simple to make an ancient Assyrian chariot. But boy, did I realize very quickly that it was uh, <laughs> not as easy and much more complicated and even more sophisticated than I had realized. So stick around if you'd like to see the rest of my progress, especially in this phase of development, which was to prove that I could actually make an Assyrian wheel, make a draft pole, make the chassis, make the cabin, uh, make the yokes, make the, the neck forks, and bring it all together so that we could have a model to then start actually making the proper chariot itself. So December of 2018, late December of 2018 was when I got started. Yeah. Yeah, really good. Oh, that's perfect, yeah. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, now it is.
the night before I had wet the actual timber that was going around the cabin frame and what that allowed me to do was uh, make sure that the the plywood the bendy plywood was actually capable of going around the tight uh, bend around the sides and front of the cabin and here you can see the template that I've made for the Y pole the draft pole which connects to the corner of the actual chassis and checking the actual angle of the draft pole now the hard shell casing around the cabin frame has been uh, put on with screws and cut to finish size and you can really start to see the shape of the cabin come forth the tooth shield which is usually seen in ancient Assyrian reliefs on the back of the cabin would uh, act as a barrier almost like a door to close off that back section more or less You can see the straight part of the draft pole had already been laminated and shaped together. And here I'm uh, trying to figure out the exact angle for the other pieces that are coming from the corners of the cabin to meet the straight part of the draft pole. Notice the mechanical fixings connecting the Y pole to the straight part of the pole and the support rods also have been uh, laminated and shaped and made to fit from the top of the cabin to the draft pole as well so one on the left and one on the right uh, and you can also notice the template that I've started to make for the yoke which was a, a rough template and that gave me an opportunity to see the proportions and uh, how it was gonna look more or less in shape so another thing I'd like to to mention is those support rods are your braking mechanisms for the chariot so that it doesn't crumple together when the horses brake. Another parameter that I had set uh, for myself was to be able to design this chariot without having to steam bend any parts such as the yoke, such as the draft pole, and such as the v-spokes for the wheel which we will see later on and I chose to use a method of laminating parts together and then gluing them together uh, as I have in this manner and if you focus particularly on the junction of the Y pole from the corners of the cabin to the straight part and you can see I've glued that with epoxy resin uh, to make sure that that junction was going to be strong and also pinned the pieces together with hardwood dowels to see how that was going to work and here you can also notice the the yoke has been laminated together and shaped uh, and so have the two ne neck forks and now the peapod pole also has been uh, laminated together and uh, shaped as well Individual pieces were cut for the V-spokes. I needed three for each one and I needed six of them. So three times six was the amount of individual pieces I needed to make the V-spokes. You can see them being laminated together with clamps and I was determined to make sure that even though I wasn't steam bending parts I had all the parts necessary and made uh, 
of a traditional ancient Assyrian wheel so that then I could put it together in a traditional manner. And with a circle cutting jig, I cut the uh, inner fellows out, three pieces for each half. So that's six pieces in total to make the, the rims. And started shaping the ends of the spokes to sit flush with the star hub that I had created, which took a lot of effort and time. But was well worth the result. Once the V spokes had been shaped exactly to, to fit my center star hub, I then proceeded to make the outer fellows or the six segments that go around the outside of the inner fellows, which are the wooden tires. For me, one of the most challenging parts was actually creating the joinery, thinning, thinning out the actual V-shaped spokes uh, and creating the, the V-slot mortise and tenons for the spokes to go into the actual rim. Uh, here, care is obviously needed and coming from a stone masonry background, uh, <laughs> it was, um, yeah, uh, challenging to say the least to create joins like that for me, especially for the first time. Now, what you see here is me actually test fitting as I'm going along consistently uh, to make sure that everything is always lining up. Once that was good, I started laminating the actual pieces of the outer fellow or wooden tire, which came in six segments. And here's a review of the uh, inner fellows with all the joins finished and the spider when put together, which was uh, ready to get glued together. I think it's crucial now to actually stop and uh, explain a little bit of, of how I actually managed to make the central star hub without using a lathe. So this entire hub section was made out of uh, eight layers and when I glued my pieces together what I did was I glued two pieces at the same time and made sure that they were dry and then glued them to another set of two pieces that I had already glued up earlier as well. And that stopped the pieces from sliding around so that I wasn't having to deal with eight pieces that were sliding around. And although that took a longer process, it was uh, very crucial for me to get the actual shape uh, as accurate as possible. more test fitting of the wheel with on the axle with the chassis and the cabin and i'm uh, checking out things as i'm going along seeing how everything's uh, coming together and nothing's glued yet and this is what i meant by gluing the two layers at a time in order for me to be able to form the star hub However, in this case, I'm doing them for the actual flanges or uh, the, the hub caps that go around the actual spider and center star hub together. So I'd glue two at a time, wait for them to dry, and then glue another two at a time, and then wait for them to dry, and then glue those uh, two pieces together, which gave me four pieces, and then glued them to the other two, etc, etc, in order for me to build up the uh, amount, amount of layers that I need. In this case here, you see the, the two flanges now uh, have been glued together, and I'm trying them around the actual uh, axle, trying them on the axle with the, with the uh, spokes as well, the spiders, and seeing how uh, things work out for the first time and whether there's too much friction of 
the hubcaps and the and the center star hub uh, against the the axle. So it's recording now. Here is the spokes or the spider, and this is the cap ends, as you can see. Yeah, there's a little step and the star shape on the center of the hub, and this hub has been made to to fit to fit that perfectly same on the other side and now i'm just taking it for a test spin to see if it actually spins around the axle also i noticed that uh, they they have locking mechanisms in here to attach the hub to or the side caps to the actual hub so what I'll be doing, what I'll be doing is gluing some uh, pieces onto onto the hub, which will lock around the shape of the star uh, and give more traction for spinning to stop the to stop the caps sliding around for no reason. But I think it's uh, it's going really well. We can see it's spinning now. I've got another two two pieces on each end to attach to get the to get the right length of the actual uh, hub, and in the garage here's the rest of the ancient Assyrian wheel. Uh, so you can see uh, that section that section there is the actual rim, and these are the wooden wooden tires. Um, and that's rebated, rebated in there. There's a there's a a dado that goes all the way around on the inside of the rim, and these wooden tires have got a tongue which sits into that dado created into into the rim. Donald Barker from Ancient Assyrian Props and Costumes here showing you a look at what's actually involved in an ancient Assyrian wheel and we're looking at a wheel that's part of a chariot from the time period of Ashurnasapal uh, you're looking at around 2800 years ago at least I mean this is sophisticated technology we've got the central hub the V spokes the rims and then the wooden tires and the the cleats that will go on either side and uh, they fit into the cleats will sit in this section here and uh, yeah so whoever thinks ancient people were not sophisticated is uh, is <laughs> is kidding themselves because I mean this is this has all been done by hand I've used uh, machines but hand machines to cut like jigsaws or or hand polishers to to polish and it's taken me this long to make I mean could you imagine uh, how skilled they were to be able to manufacture parts like this out of wood without uh, any anything like that now I haven't used any CNC machines like I said I've got just pretty a, a pretty basic setup with relatively cheap uh, cheap tools and like I said it's not what you got it's what you can do with what you got in here uh, you can you can see that exploded view and this is only one wheel so imagine uh, imagine the rest of the the, re the rest of the chariot so you got your your cabin here and on that will be will be a Y pole. So, for example, Egyptian chariots had had a straight pole coming right from underneath the cabin area, and in between the two horses, uh, ancient Assyrian chariots 
according to the latest research, had a Y pole, which means that from each corner of the cabin, a Y shape came and then joined together to go between the horses. And that gives a lot of uh, stability between between the horses and the cabin, especially for uh, side to side movement, lateral movement. So, yeah. Uh, I don't know if you can get a glimpse, but it's pretty messy in there. I've got my uh, my neck, my neck yokes, my neck forks, and my neck yokes inside, plus the the Y pole already. Uh, but we'll have a look at that some other time. <laughs> Obviously, you could tell how uh, <laughs> relieved I was to actually have the parts of the joints all together and it just made me appreciate the work of ancient uh, people so much more so yeah I guess that's why <laughs> I was so excited to actually finally have the parts and and get them ready for gluing okay we're recording here in my garage and what we have here is the the caps the hub uh, caps and you can see I've I've put the teeth on them and uh, they will now sit uh, around that star hub in the center so let's go have a look at that and see exactly what's going with the ancient Assyrian wheel Okay, so this is my first attempt at an ancient Assyrian wheel and right now this is all uh, dry fit so nothing's uh, glued but we can see that we have this which is the, the center hub and those end caps go in around and then the teeth that I've glued will sit around in this area flat up against the, the spokes. And as you can see, you've got uh, V-shape spokes here and, and a V-slot, uh, mortise and tenon as well. And that allows for alignment regarding the, the spokes so that there's no twisting even though uh, you've got uh, circular circular dowels on the end now you have your your little rib here which which I've uh, I've done that's just a, a, a rebate cut into into the rim and this will get pinned uh, and it'll go through uh, a layer of the rim and then the tongue of of the wheel the tire sorry the wooden tire and then come out the other side uh, going through the rim again and also the the outside cleat now <clears throat> uh, there's there's a few ways you can you can attach the the tires together I've used uh, a tongue a floating mortise and tenon joint in in these sections uh, as as you can see so I'm hoping I'll be able to to reuse these parts before before I glue up the wheel to be able to make the other one and make some more permanent templates uh, so that I could recreate this should I need to. Uh, but all in all, I think it's uh, coming along quite quite nicely so far even though it's my first attempt and uh, let's let's see how how it rolls not right now but once it's all all together and here what you see is the actual uh, spider all glued up together and uh, more shaping was done to the actual spokes and they were smoothed out and uh, here you can start to see me uh, insert the spokes to into into the actual rim 
and I did uh, one half and then the other half. Tunnel Parker here in my garage and uh, giving you an update on how the chariot wheel is going. Uh, I've started gluing it up so as you can see the spokes and the center hub are, are all glued in and uh, the yellow and red bucket in the top left hand corner is what I've used. Uh, that's a uh, an epoxy, an epoxy resin, uh, epoxy crete or something like that you can get from Bunnings, but yeah, uh, seems to be okay. But we'll we'll see. I mean, the the proof will be in the pudding. I mean, when when we actually uh, see the wheel bearing weight and and wonder how the how the glue joints are going to hold up. Now, I've left the spokes loose for the time being. I'll get the I'll get the other half of the rim on and then I'll uh, I'll attach the the rim together in the right position followed by the uh, tires which which are all down down at the bottom there and uh, yeah finally we'll glue up the tires in the meantime I'm just gonna have some fun and wait for some uh, resin to, to dry before I get back into it. Donald Barker from Ancient Assyrian Props and Costumes here having a look at my wheel uh, after it's been glued up so I've just come down to the garage and before I start taking off the clamps I'm gonna I'm gonna have a bit of a bit of a look and see exactly what's going on so you can see the the center hub uh, is glued onto the spokes and the spokes are now uh, inside the rim and the rim has been uh, all glued glued together and now it's just a matter of uh, seeing exactly uh, whether or not it's going to hold up so I'm going to take the clamps off, do a bit more shaping and sanding and prepare it for putting on the wooden tires on the outside. Okay, so here I've taken it off the clamps. We can see I've put the axle up on the carriage cabin, the chariot cabin and let's see how it spins so that's okay let's check for wheel balance that's not too bad So now we finally have the makings of a proper ancient Assyrian wheel and uh, I'm excited to get the wooden tires on and finally see it shaped and on. Now uh, in regards to the actual tire glue up, the six segments of the tire on the actual rim, what needed to happen was uh, the channel needed to get reopened uh, so that any excess glue that was inside had to be cleaned out of the channel so that the tongue of the actual tires would sit uh, into, into that dado nicely. Donald Barco here in my garage and the uh, moment of truth has finally arrived I've uh, totally glued the wooden tires to, to the rim and uh, obviously we'd already glued the 
spokes to the center hub cap uh, or the center hub uh, so really what's what's left is to glue on the, the cleats and the, and the hub caps uh, but first the moment of truth will come when I take off the clamps and see how well this uh, this wheel is actually gonna stay together so stay tuned for for that ladies and gentlemen this is Donald Barker from ancient Assyrian props and costumes today I've been working on my chariot and uh, as you can see I've got it up on some some stands and the axle is running underneath underneath the, the cabin you've got the you've got the chassis and then the the Y pole and the these braking mechanisms uh, and then you've got the the pole across and that is meant to uh, have a pea pod satchel attached to to it but as you can see the the elements of of the chariot the structural elements of the of the chariot are all are all now starting to come come together here's the the oak so so that's the the oak and the and the horse neck forks and these are all been uh, laminated and then carved out by by hand uh, with my trusty polish machine all skills I picked up in my stonemasonry trade and uh, this Y pole because I don't have the luxury of being able to to bend timber I had to try come up with a with a mechanism in order to to, to be able to create a Y pole without having to to, to bend timber and uh, structural elements like this would have all been would have all been steam bent timber at the very least uh, these these parts in ancient times would have all been steam bent as well uh, these these yokes as well would have been steam bent the forks uh, and and of course this uh, this pea pod pole that's uh, attached from the yoke to to the cabin so this this is my first time uh, assembling my my chariot uh, roughly to to see it with uh, with the actual wheel on now you notice the width of the axles is is quite is quite wide I am gonna chop this down a little bit but generally speaking it should be about two point uh, two point three to two point to 2.5 meters long and the the long axle helps helps with the stability and uh, prevents rollovers as well with with the chariot but this is what we're talking about full-size ancient Assyrian chariot from the time period of Ashur-Nasapal here you get a sense of what it would look like with uh, with the wheel on and you get that you get that vision, which is uh, which is on the on the reliefs regarding regarding Ashurnasa Palace uh, palace reliefs, and I think it's uh, it's uh, it really is amazing. And, and to be honest, I, I I doubted whether or not I'd actually be able to pull it off. And my biggest concern was the uh, was the wheels more so than than the rest of the the chariot. Uh, so at this stage, I've got another wheel to make, and there's the the pea pod section to to do as well. Uh, there's there's some attachments that need to be made to to attach the 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 neck uh, the yoke and the and the forks to to the yoke. But yeah, uh, we've also got uh, stuff to to finish off with uh, with the cabin. I've got the the, the lacing in here in here to do we've got the partition between between the cabins as well but yeah uh, it's just 
blowing my mind how how good this chariot's actually coming together. So hopefully we can finish it sooner rather than than later. And uh, I'm not really concerned about the decorations at the at the moment. That will all come after I know that this uh, chariot is structurally sound and. We need to be able to make sure that not only is it in, uh, a, a, an example of a possible replica from back in ancient Assyrian times, but uh, I want it to be able to function, to carry weight uh, and, and, and carry preferably uh, three grown men. So hopefully we can, we can fit uh, a minimum of 80 kilos for each grown man. Uh, so you're looking at 160 plus another another 80. That's uh, 240. So say uh, safely, I wanted to be able to carry 250 kilos in the in the cabin. Uh, so so the axle needs to be able to bear bear that weight and distribute that weight to the to the wheels and the and the ground as well. So uh, yeah, I'm just really excited about this ancient Assyrian chariot hey John hey what are you up to uh, just uh, filling up some, some holes little little holes to sand the back so it'll be nice and nice and smooth when I'm when I'm done sanding uh, what do you think so far? It looks amazing. Look amazing at that, guys. Yeah. yeah. I was I was pretty uh, pretty stoked when I when I got it up like this. Look at that. Look at the. It's perfection. It was during this stage of the build that I received an email um, from Harvard University uh, in regards to my ancient Assyrian soldiers outfit, specifically the off-duty officers outfit, and uh, was wondering if I was willing to collaborate on a project with them uh, to try to come up with a 3D character for one of their uh, museum apps, which I was uh, really surprised and honoured and wanted to be a part of that. So, regarding the actual chariot build, I was really excited because I could see the potential now at the end of the tunnel or the light at the end of the tunnel because I could make a wheel, I could make the wiper, I could make the support rods, I... I could make the 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 chassis, the cabin, uh, and put it all together, and and everything was starting to actually come together, um, and it was just a matter of getting things tested to see exactly how everything was going to work together. Donald Barker from Ancient Assyrian Props and Costumes. We're here to test out the ancient Assyrian wheel and uh, let's go for a let's go for a spin. are okay. Uh, we've just got to touch it up, but yeah, otherwise it's spinning pretty, pretty well. Let's, let's see how we go.
better. Yeah, easy. No problems. Now, my grocery. Yeah. Okay. That's your ancient room. Yeah. Not bad, huh? Hey. Hi. Let's go. Hot down. How cool is that? Yeah, that's awesome. That's... Bye. Hey, hey. Let's whack this monster wheel on, on the axle. Poses like that, you shoot out side there, mind you, there's no flooring in here yet, but we'll give it a go. How's that look? Okay, bye. See ya. Donald Barker from Asian Missouri Props and Costumes here to showcase a little bit more of my chariot. Now, as you can see, we've got uh, six spoke ancient Assyrian wheels, got a white pole, some uh, support rods, a cabin, a blue timber is the chassis, the axle, and uh, yeah, I've got the neck forks and, uh, and the yoke inside. But uh, today, what I'd like to do is actually uh, test, test the joinery used in order to, to create the chassis. Uh, I have some concerns regarding whether or not it's actually going to hold up. And, uh, it's more of a test to see if the joints are actually going to, going to work and lock in together. Uh, and and this, if these joints work, then I'll be using them in my in my remake of this of this cabin. So this cabin is a prototype from which I'll use my my measurements and guides to recreate the, the actual proper cabin. Uh, so even until now I've only still got one wheel but we've managed to support the other side so now 
what we're trying to figure out is whether or not the axle can bear the weight of uh, one person and then two people and hopefully we can get three people in the chariot, three grown men to, to be able to stand in the chariot and not hesitate about the axle breaking from underneath them. And that's what this, uh, this test is going to hopefully represent. Okay, I've, I've got it on. I'll try. I'll try to jump in. It's recording now. Yeah, recording now. How are we going to do this? Please, docking now. Let me jump on this. Docking now, come on. Tap la, tap la. Oh, and you film me, la. Yeah, babe. Carry two people. That's two people in my chariot. Wait till you get the pouches on the slide. 